Hello and welcome to our online worship service here at St. John's United Methodist Church in Dover, New Hampshire. My name is Sue Frost and it is my joy to serve here as pastor, to work among these wonderful people here at St. John's who truly are the hands and feet of Jesus in this world and in our immediate community. It's wonderful to have you here with us that we may all worship together this day. If this is your first time here at our worship service, I invite you to go to our church website, stjohnsdover.org, and take a look around there at the pages and see some of the things that we do and see if perhaps God is nudging you to be a part of them. I encourage you to go to our contact page and say hello and let us know how you're doing. And also to go to our give page where you can make a donation to help support our many wonderful ministries here through our church. Today during this time of worship, we're going to pray, we're going to sing, we'll hear a passage of scripture, and we'll also hear a message about a river that can bring us great gladness. Let us gather together and hear more about this river. There is a river, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. There is a river, there is a river, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you who are our security, our rock, our help, by the flow of your Holy Spirit, the river which makes glad the city of God, draw me ever more deeply into an outbreak of your grace. When I am afraid, let me hear your voice calling. Be still and know deep within that I am God, Lord above all that unshakable reality lead me into all the tumult of today in your ever sustaining strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us join in singing our hymn, Peace Like a River. Like a river in my soul. 
Our scripture is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Where is God in times of trouble? We often find ourselves asking questions like this and the answers are not always immediately clear. Certainly, the examples of trouble are easy to spot. Even the psalmist talks about those in today's reading, writing, Though the earth should shake, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its rivers roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, the nations are in uproar, the kingdoms totter. It just seems like a really long list that this writer of Psalm 46 wrote describing all kinds of disasters, both natural ones and ones dealing with people. We can add to that list, of course. How about earthquakes, tsunami, global warming, 
civil unrest, wars, pandemics, racial injustice, and murder. We can make a really long list, and it's not hard to do, because all we have to do is look around to find trouble. But where is God in all of that? The writer of the psalm goes on to say, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Ah, perhaps that last word is our key to our question here. The Lord is our refuge. The word refuge can also be translated fortress, or maybe even just simply forts. Now there's something we know something about. From even early childhood, we hear about building forts. We hear stories like the three little pigs, right? Who made forts, houses out of straw, sticks, and brick. And we learn that only the brick one could withstand the big bad wolf. So we learn early on how to make forts. I love to make forts. I made lots of forts when I was a kid. And then when I had my own children, we continued to make forts underneath the dining room table, in the living room, throwing the pillows from the couches everywhere, using big sheets. It was a lot of fun. We know about forts. People have known about forts for a very long time. Ancient cities were built like forts, like fortresses with big city walls around them to protect them. Here in New England, we also built forts, maybe not like castles with moats, but instead something called garrisons. Garrisons were fortified log houses that usually had log walls or thick planks. And I've got a picture to show you here. Here's a picture of one right here in Dover, New Hampshire. It looks like an ordinary house really from back then, a good place for a family to live. But in times of danger, it was so strongly built that a number of families could gather together in them to take cover and look for protection during times of trouble. Garrisons like these were very common in frontier towns, especially in Maine and New Hampshire. In fact, the name of Dover, Dover's nickname is the Garrison City. And this is a picture of one of the last few remaining garrisons I hear even in the country. This is the William Dam House, built in 1675. It was originally located a little further south from downtown in the Back River area, but then later moved to its present site at the Woodman Institute Museum on Central Avenue here in Dover. You can see that it's a very sturdy house with thick walls. Certainly the early settlers in Dover had it rough living in even simpler houses than that originally, and making their living by fishing from the rivers here in Dover. To the south was the Massachusetts Bay Colony, which was settled about the same time as Dover, but it was a very different place, a very different focus. The people in the Massachusetts Bay Colony were there to create a Christian civilization in this wilderness. There's a story told by Cotton Mather, an early Puritan minister who heard about a minister who came north up to this area, perhaps to Dover, and told of a story that happened to him there. Cotton Mather wrote, I've heard that one of our ministers, once preaching to a congregation there, urged them to approve themselves as a religious people. Otherwise, they would contradict the main end of planting this wilderness. This happened and we learn that a well-known person who was there in the gathering cried out, Sir, you are mistaken. You think you are preaching to the people at the bay. Our main end is to catch fish. They didn't want to talk about creating a church in the wilderness or a Christian community in this foreign land. The people here, they, they just wanted a fish. Well, I think I might be on dangerous ground here, preaching in Dover and trying to encourage all of us here to create a Christian community 
where we can gather together to worship God and to know God's protection. Our psalm today talks about a city of God, a place of peace and protection, a place of beauty and abundance, and a safe refuge from the destructive nature of the world around us and other people around us. In verse 5, the writer says, God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved, even though the earth quakes and the sea goes into turmoil, the city shall not be moved. Now we don't know what city the writer was talking about. It could have been Jerusalem, or it might have been some other city in Israel, or maybe it was a more of a, an example of the model city. And these days, maybe it's Dover, maybe it's Barrington, or Somersworth, or Nottingham, or one of the Berwicks, or one of the other towns right around here. Could these be a city of God that doesn't move even when things go crazy all around us? In times of danger, it is good to have a garrison handy, a fort, a fortress. But you know, the interesting thing is it doesn't just work to build strong walls. You can't hole up inside of a fortress for a long, long time without other resources like water. Water, flowing, life-giving water. If the enemy were to shut off your supply of water, you wouldn't last long. But if we can make sure that we continue to get this living water through it all, we can last a long, long time. The writer of Psalm 46 says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God will help the city when the morning dawns. Now it's interesting to note here that the source of protection is not the city itself. The source of protection is God who is there with us inside the fortress, there with us making sure that we have living water flowing, fresh water for us to help us endure. This cool, fresh, abundant stream that flows through and brings us refreshment consolation, even gladness in times when we are hiding in our fortresses or garrisons. It's true, sometimes in times of danger, we do need to retreat into our forts, into our garrisons, into our homes, but that's not what sustains us. What sustains us is God, God's presence with us inside our fortified cities. God who provides this river whose streams make us all glad. This river that assures us time and again God will always provide what we need. For God is a very present help in times of trouble. God is present with us now wherever we are, whether we are watching this service and worshiping together from our homes or outside or wherever we are, God is present with us God will see us through, and God is there ready to listen to us, to hear what we have to say. So let us take some time now to move into a time of prayer, to hear what God is wanting us to say, to hear others praying to God alongside us, as we all turn our focus now to praying to God.
grateful for so much Lord but I pray for warmer hearts and cooler heads I thank God for so many things but please God keep our families and our friends safe and protect them Father I have accepted my grandson Eli's death but please please forgive him didn't know what he was doing. God, you teach us to love one another as we love you. I struggle to understand how your children can treat each other so poorly with disrespect and hatred and without love. God, if we are all your children, how come we can't get along and respect each other? God's heart is an open door Did you know you can say anything to God? Truly, God is a God we can say anything to. So let us continue in prayer. O oh Lord of all hopefulness, continue to hear the prayers of your people, we pray. For in good times and bad times, how grateful we are that we can turn to you for help, that we can say anything to you, that you are always present and ready to listen to us in this world that so often seems a place of chaos, uncertainty, and pain. Sometimes, O oh God, when we are afraid, we retreat. We build fortresses around ourselves, wanting to stay safe. But you, O oh Lord, are our refuge and our strength. You are our fortress, our garrison. And even in times of trouble, you are present and ready to provide for us. You provide a river of love to flow through our lives, to refresh us, encourage us, sustain us, and fill us with your love. We pray today, O oh God, that you will continue to let your river of love flow through us and to show us what is needed to bring your people closer to you, that they too might be gladdened by the river of love you offer. Today we join together as your people in praying for our congregation Lord, keep us strong, encourage us, even when we make mistakes. Watch over me as the pastor here, as I try to continue to serve you, O Lord, during this pandemic. Sometimes making mistakes on camera that I would rather not make so public. But God, I know you are good and you can work through each one of us, even when we make mistakes. We pray for all who turn to their pets for comfort. We are so glad that you provide that source of comfort to them. And we ask that you be especially present to Marcia this week, whose cat died very suddenly. Lord, we pray that you will continue to be present to those who've had surgery this past week, especially Ken, and with those who will be having surgery soon. Carol, and Sue Ellen. Lord, be with all who fear catching COVID-19. Be with those who do have it and are in need of healing. Be present to those who have recovered. And also be present, we pray, to the family of those who have not recovered. We pray for all who work in hospitals and in other places that bring them into possible contact with the virus. Keep all of them safe, O oh God, and when they return to their homes, keep their families safe. Lord, be with all who are now climbing the walls, who are tired of being isolated for these past four months. Help us all to find safe ways to interact with other people and to stay in touch with your flowing river of love. All these things we pray and so many other things, O oh God, as they may be part of your holy will, 
in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. How blessed we are to have the river of God flowing through our lives to help us through difficult times. There are so many ways to show our gratitude to God for this. Once again, I invite you to go to our church website, stjohnsdover.org, and especially to go to the Give page there, where you can make a donation to our church. We think we're very fancy now because we have online giving, but we haven't given up our old ways either. We also like to get checks in the mail. And so even though you can't put your envelopes into the offering plate here at church yet, the way we used to, you can put them in the mail and we will be happy to receive them that way as well. And know that when we receive your gifts, it brightens and lifts our hearts as well. For we know that we may then be able to continue to do all the wonderful ministries that we are currently doing. We will be doing these ministries no matter what, but your continued gifts help to sustain those and keep us going. There is so much to celebrate. As you also look around our website, you'll see that we have a number, quite a large number of small groups of different sizes and with different focuses. A little bird told me this week that our small group for people in their 20s and 30s, which they affectionately call not your mama's small group, has been, re re been uh, meeting remotely every week and have been doing some serious study of the Bible, I understand, including some arguments about what Isaiah said. Well, this gladdens your pastor's heart to know that you are studying God's word so faithfully throughout this pandemic. And I hope that by gathering together that way to discuss these things, it also helps you to grow closer to each other and closer to God. With God's help, we can do anything. Let us remember that river that God sends flowing through our fortresses to gladden our hearts. Let us continue to gather around that river. In fact, let's sing about it now. Shall we gather at the river? I think we should. <laughs>
part of the country, there are many rivers all around us. And so as we prepare to leave this time of worship, I hope that as you go out that you'll notice all the rivers around us and be reminded of that river from God that flows through the city, bringing gladness to all our hearts. And may you feel the love and peace of God and from our community with you always. As you remember, and as we all remember, that God is holding our lives. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, we believe. 